Hello everyone, Argsy here. Welcome back to the Canadian Cattle Farmer here in Chilliwack, British Columbia. We are carrying on from the work we were doing last time. We were harvesting wheat and mowing grass and getting things ready for some hay. We've just filled up the combine with some diesel and we're going to head on down to the field. We've got everything down there pretty much that we need. Uh, growing car and header are both down there and we've also got one of our workers set up and going around the grass field and they're starting to get that tethered and getting it made into some hay. So we're going to head on down we're going to carry on with this and let the worker keep moving and try and get uh, at least all this wheat harvested, get that all finished up and then we'll come down and try and bale the straw we won't try and juggle it and do two tasks at once like we did last week that was a little bit of a challenge uh, but we will try and get this field harvested the wheat finished, the straw done and uh, then as well as that we might see if we can get this field wind road up and bailed as well but we'll just have to wait and see how we go then going to have a, a lot of bales to pick up and move off fields because we have all the straw bales over the road to still deal with as well. Anyhow let's get on down here get hooked up to the header and we will go and make a start. Now this field is I think a little bit larger than the one we've just done one over the road so it should take be about the same time. Um, in fact I might just have a check and have a look and see how it appears when we look at it on the map. Just get closed up there to the header and I'm completely out of alignment so we'll just have to move over a little bit. Surprised we weren't getting a trigger there but here we go it's much better. Right, back up and out of the way and we'll come over here to the edge of the field. Um, we might actually, just trying to figure out how we might do this, we might spend a little bit of time in the combine if we can this time. I might uh, go through and use, maybe try and use course play with the uh, with the grain cart and set that up and then we'll have to grab a truck and bring that down as well but if at least we can uh, do a couple of laps here while we're working and get things up and going and spend a little bit of time in the combine rather than the grain cart like we did last time. But there we go. So working, we're getting a straw swath dropped down and everything's looking pretty good. So let's park ourselves here for just a second. Turn that off and we're going to see about trying to get this set up on course play and we'll just take a quick look at these field sizes. We're right back up and underway. Now we've managed to get course play running the grain cart. Hopefully it's going to work. It uh, had a little bit of a hussy fit to start off with, but let's just take a look back there. Back. I don't even know where it's going. It's driving back down across the other field. So if it's crossed, it's going to come back to where we are because I don't know why it might want to go down there. I did have a look at the field sizes and I was leading you astray. This one's actually only 5.66 hectares. The one over the road was 6.19. Uh, where we might see a little bit of difference though is this one has a yield potential around 120 percent whereas the other one was only 89 so we could actually see this small field creating more wheat and getting more wheat off this than we did off the bigger field over the road which will go to show when you're using precision farming picking a field as those higher yields and better uh, quality soils can really pay off um, but i'll be interested to see if that is the case or not but let's just carry on here for a little bit we're going to set ourselves up the gps i haven't done that yet uh, we'll turn that on and get things up and moving and I'll just carry on with getting some of this harvested. Hopefully we'll get that crank up back here and we'll be able to unload into it. Let's see what happens.
Alright, well, uh, we've tried to persevere with the course play. I can't get it to work. I don't know whether it's this combine, whether there's something with the way it's set up to unload with the auger or something like that, but it just does not want to come alongside us when we're ready to go. It's detected it was 75% full as we were unloading there, so it's gone down to the truck. Down empty into, which uh, I guess makes sense. I don't know where it's going to empty into as well though now because the uh, grain cart or the header trailer is on that other side so it's not even going to be able to get close enough to the truck to unload on that side. I thought parking it this way would have gone round and parked against it but yeah a little bit frustrating so we'll just persevere we might have to just uh, do things a little bit more manually once we've finished this headland pass I might actually just hire a basic standard worker and uh, let them go up and down on the field. We should be able to get there and back without having to unload and then we can jump into the grain cart. So let's go and see what's happening down here. Looks like they've managed to get unloading, which it probably means I've pushed the header trailer halfway past the truck. But anyhow, as long as we can keep going and getting this wheat harvested, I'm not going to complain too much. And there we go, it does look like the header trailer's taking a little bit of a nudge to get to this stage. So, uh, like I said, not ideal. But the truck won't be quite full off this. I don't think, and as it is we want to be able to keep the combine going, so we're just going to jump in here, get rid of this guy, he looks like he'd be better off uh, sitting in office somewhere using a calculator, uh, rather than going to drive right through the middle of our header trailer. So, go and get the combine emptied out, get this headland pass finished, and then we'll put a worker on and we'll take care of the grain cart. Alright, so we've got ourselves a worker running the combine now. Uh, truck is full, grain cart's half full, so we actually probably need to be quite fast. Okay, and getting this truck emptied out, fortunately, as we saw last time. It does have a very fast unload. So we'll go get down, get this put into the silo. Now, before we do that, I do just want to uh, refresh myself on how much wheat we have in there, because I do want to compare the two fields and see with this better performing uh, field with the better precision farming score is going to yield us a higher amount of crop for the uh, for the area so we'll keep an eye on that we'll just double check before we get down and unload this and uh, then we'll get back and carry on moving so 111,276 litres of wheat up there so that in mind let's start getting this unloaded and we'll keep an eye when we get to the end exactly how much we've ended up with if we've got more than 222,000 litres we'll know that uh, this field performed better than the other one and has uh, brought us in more yield. So there we go, that's nice and quick and empty. We should be able to get back down and keep the combine moving. Well we couldn't have judged that closer if we wanted to. I jumped into the combine very quickly because it gave us the 80% warning and they pretty much are at 100%. Don't know how much further they're going to get to go before they need to unload very far at all. Hopefully we get turned in from this angle and underneath the grain pipe there and and get things unloaded. Trips are going to start up and unload on the go. Doesn't look like it, which is a little bit of a shame. Just try and keep that moving. Once they're done, we will run along beside them because we want to unload as we can on this side rather than having them full. The rows are going to go get shorter though, so that should make it a bit easier. Keep up with them. Okay, what I might do, if I just pull out from under there, is that going to be enough for them to start again? That's no, not. Okay. I thought. Maybe if they stopped unloading they would get moving, get on the go again, but it seems they want to have their tank emptied. So let them do that, and we'll jump straight back into time lapsing, getting the rest of this field done.
just like that we've finished the wheat. Albeit for that little base there. Grab that. But on the right angle we might even be able to get the uh, straw to drop from the same swath. Okay, leave that there. Get things all turned off. And we're going to empty this out. It was nice to be able to jump back into the combine there for a little, little bit at the end. Once we got on those slightly shorter passes, we will manage, they will manage it and uh, just unload here on the end into the grain cart. So I'll be intrigued, like I said, start. Intrigued to see how much uh, wheat we got off this field compared to the other. I'm trying to remember now, what did I say? 112,000 litres off the first field? Be able to have a look once we get this all filled up into the truck and dumped into the silos to see if we ended up with more than 222 223,000 litres. Well, how close to that we are. Um, the John Deere, the worker, and the Tita, they've all finished. I don't know if you picked it up during any of that time lapse, but for some reason, when I created the course and I didn't pick it up, I've actually done the field across ways, not along the length of the uh, field, not along the way we mowed it. So, a little bit different, but uh, it's all worked out all right. What I think we're going to do, get all this here tidied up, it's the uh, grain cart full, so we're just going to unload this straight into the truck, should have done that in the first place, um, but we're going to get everything tidied up and put away from down this end of the field, and then we'll come down with the baler, while we're baling in here, we're going to get the windrow set up and windrowed the hay, we can basically move straight into that once we're finished. We get all this sorted out, get dumped into the silos and see how much we've ended up with. We're just looking here, 37,000 litres of wheat in the back of the truck. Front hopper, get out first. Over to the back one and get that emptied out next. There it goes. And once we're done here, we'll be able to have a look and see exactly what we've ended up with. Would you believe it? 223,300 litres. So I think, without going back and exactly checking the number I said we had, I reckon we've pretty much ended up with exactly the same amount of wheat off those two fields even though there was about a half a hectare difference and it all comes down to looking here and you can actually see not that it works for this one but 149 we've got 112,000 litres off that all comes down to the potential yield on these fields unfortunately I hadn't reset it so that still counts the last couple of crops we've had off it but take a look in here and you can see we've got an 89% yield on that one and 105 on this one so probably accounts for the difference there anyhow that is us all done with harvesting for this season uh well at least our arable crops we do obviously have the corn over the road still to do but for now we're going to park everything up get this backed in against the other trailer and uh everything all put away nice and neatly and then we'll go and get things set up i'm going to grab the baler which is just here run that down into the field, bale that straw and we're also going to get a worker set up and running on some course play, get the wind run done, you can see we've already got the Kubota over there hooked up onto that, so get things sorted out and carry on moving. So moving on to getting the straw baled, we've got the wind rower up and running, you can see that in front of us, uh, I'm using a course that was already made, um, I think it was the one we used last time we were in this field, the silage, so I'm hoping that it's going to work out okay. Um, I can't remember exactly, I think there might have been a couple of rows that it didn't quite pick everything up but I think in general it did a pretty good job so fingers crossed that's the same sort of job this time around. Probably should look at getting a bigger win rather. this isn't the widest pickup uh, when you can see it there in front of us, it's not too bad but it's not the biggest so we could look at potentially upgrading that at some stage particularly considering all the grass work we're doing although I guess with the uh, bigger mower on the swather now we're doing our silage we don't have to worry about it quite so much but let them carry on we're going to jump in here let's get that unfolded first of course which uh, I always forget get that done turn on the pickup and get it lowered down I'm just going to jump straight in and carry on now things should go pretty smoothly here got some nice straight windrows do three laps around get the headland opened up and uh, then we'll see how many bales we've got in the end in fact let's just uh, bring up indicator we'll reset our bale count and then we'll be able to tell how many bales we get off this field so put that back at zero carry on and see what we end up with
job done. All the straws being picked up and made into bales. Now, stop here. Turn things off. Get it infected. One in there, two in there. Got about a quarter of a bale in the baler as well. There's probably a few bits and pieces around, but I don't think it's going to be enough to pick everything up. But look at that. Not quite sure how many bales we ended up with, whether those two count or not. We're either going to be at 49 or 51. So let's just take a bit of a look. It is 51, so it doesn't count the bales until, the, until they hit the ground. Because before I injected them, we were only at 49, but now at 51. So it's a good amount of bales. 8,000 litres each, I think they are. Uh, so what's that? 400,000 litres of straw. 9,000 litres each even. So 450, 459,000 litres off that field. Um, that's fantastic. That and the straw we've got over the road got a decent amount to take us a long way through winter and uh, allow us to pad out our feed mixes as much as possible. Now it's quite interesting we were going across pretty much in parallel with the wind row. They're doing a pretty decent job. Definitely is some sections that are getting missed in between rows but I reckon we can uh, go around and pick those up. At least they're in nice straight lines so go and pick those up with the baler uh, when we're into that. So I was going to take this back down to the yard but there's probably no reason. We might as well take it over to where we're going to start bailing, but uh, that's for next time. We'll just park it up and we'll be back to bail that in another episode. Alright, well there we go. Wheat harvested, straw baled and grass tedded and will be windrowed about halfway through the field. The windrow coming along there as they go to start another row. Uh, so we'll leave them running. They can carry on and get that all ready and the next time we'll come in and get this all baled. Before we do that, we will have to run around and collect all the straw bales up. So we're going to have a whole heap more baling, a whole heap of bale loading. And uh, we've got to figure out where to put these because they don't match the bales that are in the sheds at the moment. The round straw bales, we can only have those in there. And clover hay is all we can have in those two fields. So, in, sorry, in the two barns. So we'll just have to figure out what's our best. We have to stack the straw somewhere and uh, worry about that later on. But anyhow... I'm going to wrap things up there for this episode. Thank you all very much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed that episode and I'll catch you in the next one. Mm -hmm.